Hey, everybody. Thanks for dropping in and uh, for practicing with us uh, whenever you're practicing with us on the YouTube channel. We're really glad you're able to be with us and uh, sweet to see familiar Sangha and uh, other faces and new folks. Thank you all for being here. <clears throat> Um, and so I should say here on the recording as well that uh, I may be called away or it may be a bit of a shorter practice tonight as I'm here uh, caregiving and might be called. So uh, we'll be back to our regular timing next week. May it be so. Hmm. Yeah, I, I <clears throat> wanted to offer a reminder of uh, what this practice is. <laughs> Sometimes we might just show up but not really knowing what this particular practice is that I'm offering and that True North Insight is offering. And uh, this practice is Samatha Vipassana. <clears throat> and there's a little bit of a trend in some places to be uh, just missing the samatha part <laughs> and uh, focusing on vipassana or what's translated as insight meditation. And this practice is, uh, is both of these samatha vipassana. And it's, uh, they're both essential and, and, uh, work hand in hand to carry us on this path. Um, so Vipassana or insight means literally and also in its depth, seeing, not just visually, but seeing as in knowing in a particular way, in a special way. And that way is, is with insights into the true nature of things, that all things are impermanent, all things are conditioned, interdependent, and thus not a reliable source to be clung to for happiness. They are um, what we call dukkha. <clears throat> so these are the three characteristics of all things. And when we practice with insight or vipassana, we're paying particular attention to these qualities of whatever is arising and passing. And this is not just uh, for fun, but because it's liberating, <laughs> enlightening, freeing. Now, the first part that I was mentioning, samatha, is, is calm, serenity, tranquility, tranquility of awareness and peaceful abiding. And we can have Vipassana insights without being in a state of calm, peace, peaceful abiding. Uh, we can still have insights into where we're clinging, what's causing suffering, um, what's what might help us to be free of that, etc. And and it's much uh, easier. Um, when we're bringing care to awareness, care to the heart, mind, care to the body, by nurturing these qualities of slowing down, calming our whole adrenal system, that uh, for all of us, sometimes, and for many of us, a lot of the time, is in this... Uh, um, overactivated place fight 
light freeze responses. There's others fall on, they keep adding more of them, but <clears throat> you get the, the gist, fight, flight, freeze. Mm -mm. Because we uh, are impacted by all of our sense doors and impacted by the state of the world and the violence and the grief, by the state of our own bodies and relationships that are in turmoil often. And uh, it can get to be so chronic that we don't even realize how tense we are, how activated, how revved up until we stop and begin to settle and slow down and relax. And then we can sort of feel the contrast. We can feel letting go happening. And then we realize, whoa, I was really revved up there. So even before we started the meditation, I was, you know, speaking quickly and saying a lot of stuff at once and just like, oh, pause, take a few breaths, feel the ground. And mm, then noticing what was tense and what was letting go. <clears throat> um, and embodied awareness, which is what this practice um cultivates and asks, asks for mindfulness of body is the first and largest foundation of mindfulness. And so embodied embodiment and awareness are complete, are completely inter are, as Thich Nhat Hanh would say, or interbeing the embodiment and awareness. Just going to let this person in one sec. And, uh, so these are really interrelated. So thus, we can see that if the body is in a really activated state or a shut down state, that fight, flight, or freeze. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much we can go into about that. But if we're in a hyper or a contracted or a triggered activated state you, you can see that this can't help but affect the quality or the amount of awareness awareness and embodiment are completely interrelated and if the body nervous system breath organs, muscles are in uh, one of these states of activation, of course it affects the amount of awareness. We've all experienced this. Times where you just can't think clearly, can't be kind to yourself or to others. Um, you know, we can see the interrelationship there. <clears throat> There's two Pali words. Pali is the language that the teachings were first written down in, as far as we know. And there's two words that often get a little mashed up together that are different. And one of these, so we're talking about samatha, vipassana. We're talking about samatha, which is this calm, serene, tranquil, tranquil awareness. And the other word that sounds similar and often just get mushed together is samadhi. And of course, they're related. They have the you know the same root at the beginning of the word, but the one way to think of it is that samatha, what we're talking about, calm, is uh, or peace of mind conditions stability of mind. That uh, samatha is the the process or the practice of calming 
heart, body, mind, which then conditions and can bring the fruit or the result of unifying the mind, which is samadhi. It's the concentration or stability of the mind. So you can see they're interrelated, but a little bit different. Samadhi is the sixth of the seven factors of awakening. And um, so this, what we're talking about tonight, calming, uh, will condition and bring about these other factors of awakening, of samadhi or unifying the mind. And uh, it feels like it's uh, helpful to remember and needed in uh, this time of, uh, well, it drives me nuts now when I say this time, because it's always this time. It's always a time of war. It's always a time where there's violence, where there's unskillfulness, as well as peace and skillfulness. So it's not like we're in this time that's like this. Any history buff will clarify that. <clears throat> I digress again. <laughs> All right. So the practice is Samatha Vipassana. And <clears throat> I really want to focus and practice tonight on really establishing what are the ways that help calm your heart, body, mind, nervous system, uh, in order to have more capacity for insight and for awakening. Um, and to do one of the things that may be helpful with calming and tranquility and serenity is less effort. Some of us are really good at meditating. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna rock this. I'm gonna get this. I'm on this. I'm you know and it it can be subtle and it can be really mm, strong and it's not conducive to these very important characteristics. One of the my favorite ways of seeing how much effort is needed is um, just feeling the touch of two fingertips, like lightest touch without looking at them. You can see how little effort is needed to feel that sensation. It's so, like you don't even have to rub them, you don't have to make them cold or hot or, you know, really press them. It's just like, oh, I can feel that sensation of fingertips touching. That can be how light the effort could be. When we're paying attention to an anchor, we'll say the breath in this case. very light, so that it will be conducive to calming, to serenity. Now, that being said, uh, for those who are practicing, uh, you know, this time of night, it, it can be a sleepy time for folks to be meditating, depending on when, what your time zone is and when you're practicing this. <clears throat> so, there is a right effort. If you find you're, you know, a lot of bob and weave and you're really falling asleep, then you need to just turn up a little more brightness, not necessarily more effort, more tension, more striving, but more curiosity. Just turn up the light a little bit, the uh, brightness. And uh, I'll try to give you a reminder when we do the practice around that. I think that might be all I want to say.
Yeah. In the Dhammapada, one of the texts that Dharma is recorded in, Dhammapada 82, for those Dharma nerds amongst us, um, it says, just like a deep lake, clear and undisturbed, the wise grow peaceful on hearing the teachings. It's a beautiful image, like a deep, clear, undisturbed, calm lake. So this might be one of the images that's helpful to you. We're not practicing visualization in meditation, but a light touch with an image can sometimes help us to uh, access these qualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. Okay. So to cultivate calm, serenity, tranquility, Please adjust your environment and your posture so that you will be both wakeful and, and supported, but also inviting some peace. So if it's too bright in your space, uh, you might change that. If you want to turn away from the computer, I'm going to get a cushion. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're really going to take lots of time to slowly connect with ourselves and with the moment. So see if you need any movements or stretch or any other adjustments to your posture. So that when you arrive into stillness, it feels like a sigh. It feels like very comfortable. And this feeling of welcomeness that you, you want to be resting and still. And also with the posture, whether you're sitting or reclining, we want a sense of some energy up through the spine. So the bones are dropping down, the muscles are softening, but the spine is lengthening and has some energy to it to keep us with this sense of wakefulness, alertness, as we relax. Finding a place where the hands can rest. Open and relaxed, if that feels supportive for you. And then bring the eyes into a place of rest, whether it's resting downward with a little bit of light coming in or resting the eyes all the way closed. What feels most supportive to calm, awake, peaceful abiding for you.
see if your system would be soothed or released by two or three slightly deeper breaths or sighing breaths. And then let the breath become natural again. Feeling, remembering, reminding the muscles of the face. what they feel like when the face is calm or restful or peaceful. Widening the forehead. Softening in the hinge of the jaw a little bit. And then feeling the muscles from behind the ears down the sides of the neck and across the shoulders, feel those muscles Lengthen as the shoulders slide down. And the back of the neck lengthens slightly upward. So the chin isn't lifted, but there's a bit of energy, not tension. Feel the shoulders, weight slides right down through the elbows into relaxed hands. Feeling into the areas of the heart center and the center of the belly and seeing if there's stiffness or holding or protection, contraction there. And does it feel safe to let a bit of softness, even if it's just a few degrees of space or softness to any tension here? And as these muscles begin to let go a little bit, we begin to feel more weightedness through the hips, the pelvis, the belly, meeting the earth. Down through relaxed legs into the grounded feet. Receiving the support of the earth, not as an idea, but as a felt experience.
the earth supporting us in presence, embodiment, awareness, so that we can relax into that support. This felt experience of resting is balanced with the awake, alert awareness. If you're feeling a little bit too dull or sleepy, you might practice with your eyes slightly open. to bring in a bit of brightness. And now gently Pay attention to the fact that awareness is already here. You're already aware of the sensations of the body, sounds that are coming and going, these words coming and going, your own thoughts, emotions, these are already being known by awareness. And we're just bringing a little bit, a light touch of intention to that attention that's already here. That light touch is all that's needed And know that calm, awake awareness is here. And as we rest here with this light touch of awake awareness, knowing that you're already very sensitive and alert and receiving sensations, let the object of your meditation come to you rather than reaching out. So if there's a lot of sounds in your environment, then that might be the object you're working with tonight. If awareness has touched the sensation of breathing that's already happening, then you could begin to rest with that as your object.
As you rest, gently, lightly, knowing the object of breath or sound or sensation of body, gently turn towards the quality of your nervous system being soothed by this restful presence. Allow yourself to receive this tranquility, peaceful abiding, turn towards these qualities that are here and let them really gently be known to flourish, to spread. And at times, for all of us, the winds of a strong sensation or thoughts or reactivity might sweep the attention away. And gently, we return to the object that you've chosen, breath, sound, or sensation, with that light touch of beginning again cultivating and receiving calm, serenity, tranquility, peaceful abiding. like resting on a cloud or in receptive cupped hands or a nest in the chitta, the heart, mind, the center of the heart, light, restful, peaceful. And as we continue to cultivate this calm abiding, if something very strong sweeps in, image, emotion, sensation, thought, sound, if it's very strong and disturbing, just ask what it needs. Is, is there touch needed? some metta or compassion, do you need to 
Have some gentle mindful movement or opening your eyes for a few moments. Just ask what does it, what it needs. And when you feel that kind attention, if it brings some release or presence with it, and then gently begin again. Just like a deep lake, clear and undisturbed, the wise grow peaceful on hearing the teachings.
these last few minutes of the practice, try to feel a felt memory. Let the body really know to whatever degree it's available what calm, abiding, serenity, tranquility of awareness feels like so that you can return to it, cultivate it, begin again many, many times. So if you want to continue cultivating this, please uh, ignore the bell ringing and um, just continue your practice. And um, I just needed to end a little bit earlier again tonight. So apologies for that. Mm. Uh, if you've joined us on the YouTube practice uh check below for links to the upcoming retreat and um thanks for being with us <laughs>